is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2024 mercedes-benz glc 300 coupe courtesy of mercedes-benz of hagerstown in hagerstown maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so today we are in this one because this is a very very good looking suv and there's actually a lot of changes for the 2024 model year as well including this thing is actually bigger than the 2023 GLC Coupe. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. So MSRP for the GLC Coupe is going to start at $54,700. Powering the Beast is a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, putting out 255 horsepower at 5,800 RPM, 273 pound-feet of torque coming in at 1,800 RPM. That power being sent to all four wheels through the four-matic all-wheel drive system, of course. Power being sent to the ground through a nine-speed automatic with paddle shifters and the very high quality paddle shifters as well. I guess as expected for Mercedes-Benz. We will be testing those out here in a little bit. Zero to 60 time, approximately 6.2 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 20 in the city, 26 on the highway taking premium unleaded fuel. And so before we do that paddle shifter test or acceleration test, did want to also mention to you guys the drive modes. The button is labeled dynamic. It's just underneath the infotainment screen there. Drive modes will include eco, comfort, sport, sport plus, and individual. Adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, and the steering sensitivity. So now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find it straight away. Let's put the paddle shifters and acceleration here to the test. I want to see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react for us here. And let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, here comes our green light and here we go. Okay, there's a slight delay. I will say Mercedes-Benz usually does very, very good with their paddle shifters. Uh, for example, AMG, they always crush it. But yeah, there is a slight delay to the paddle shifters. This is an SUV after all, so I didn't expect them to be insanely quick, but they are pretty quick. I will say that. I've definitely tested slower paddle shifters. As far as acceleration goes, that was actually pretty darn good. You're not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway. Zero to 60 and 6.2, that's plenty respectable. So absolutely no issues for me. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So four wheel ventilated disc brakes do come standard. But I did wanna mention though, there is a sport brake system that comes with one of the AMG line packages. Uh, cheapest AMG line package starts at $2,700, but that gives you perforated front disc and painted calipers with the Mercedes-Benz lettering as well. So that is pretty cool. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, that comes in at 109 feet. That is like better than a sports sedan right there. Let me tell you guys, usually SUVs come in in the 120s, um, even as high as 139 feet. So anything in the one teens is typically a sports sedan and anything less than that is a sports car. So 109 feet, that is insane. As far as brake you feel goes, yeah, it's actually not as firm as I expected it to be. Um, because of that number, I guess, I expected it to be a little firmer, but it's kind of more of the luxury side of things as far as the braking feel goes. But having said that, with that number, you're not gonna have any issues with the braking. So absolutely wonderful braking on the GLC Coupe. Then touching on suspension and handling, you will find a four wheel multi-link suspension coming standard. But my favorite part, you guys, you also get an adaptive damping suspension that comes standard on the GLC Coupe as well. So what that is, is it monitors each shock absorber individually, not only adjusting to the road imperfections, giving you a smoother ride, but it also tightens up that suspension during heavy cornering, giving you better handling as well. So really giving you the best of both worlds. So typically, that's an option, even with other luxury automakers. So the fact that that comes standard on the GLC Coupe, that means you're gonna get the very best ride quality, but also better handling as well. So you gotta love that. And speaking of, as far as ride quality goes, as we are cruising over the smoothest roads in history right now, obviously it has been perfectly fine. So absolutely no issues there. As far as steering feel goes, it leans on the heavier side of things, even in that comfort driving mode, which I love. But if you wanted an even heavier steering feel, put it in the sport driving mode and you got that as well. So kind of 
of gives you something for everybody, but it's a very nice steering feel. It's definitely not a loose steering feel as you typically do find in SUVs. So more sporty in nature. So I'm a big fan of that. As far as cabin noise goes, as we're going 55 miles per hour right now, you guys could be the judge of that coming through my road mic right now. I personally don't have any issues, but playing a part to that cabin noise, you do get an acoustic laminated front windshield coming standard. And there is acoustic laminated front door glass for an additional $150 in case you wanted to go that route. But then touching on visibility, this is probably the first thing I noticed when I got in this one. Because of the shape, uh, I would say the visibility is kind of hilarious. It, it's not that much. If you wanted a little better visibility, don't go with the coupe version of the GLC. Go with the regular SUV version. But honestly, for the styling, I kind of think it's worth it. I really like the coupe styling in this one. So it's nothing that would bother me. It's something that you get used to. You ask anybody with a vehicle with bad visibility and they will tell you the same thing. You get used to it. So. Uh, I personally wouldn't even think twice about it, so no issues there. In addition to that though, rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard on the GLC Coupe, so whenever this thing detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on the windshield wipers for you there, and a head-up display is available that goes for an additional $1,100 if you wanted to go that route. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Mercedes-Benz GLC Coupe. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Mercedes-Benz GLC 300 Coupe, finished in black. Yes, that is the exact exterior color name that Mercedes went with for this color. But anyways, let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the letter W, indicating that the GLC Coupe is built and assembled in Germany, as it should be. But let's go ahead and start with some of the changes on the exterior for 2024 here. The GLC Coupe is slightly bigger for 2024. It's actually 1.2 inches longer. The cargo space is increased by 1.6 cubic feet. It's 0.2 inches taller than before, and the drag coefficient has actually been reduced from 0.30 to 0.27. So a little better aerodynamics for the 2024 model year as well. So that's pretty much the spec changes for the 2024 GLC Coupe here. But let's go ahead and take a look up front here diamond block front grille finished in chrome does come standard more aggressive front fascia of course coming with the amg line package by the way that goes for 2700 there's a uh, black version of the amg line package i think that goes for like 3100 i'm just taking a guess on that part but you're either going to get gloss black or silver trim on the lower portion of that front bumper we got the gloss black today led headlights with led daytime running lights do come standard get the automatic feature with that and you also get automatic high beams so if you have your high beams on in night senses the vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams then when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there but some of the options up front i wanted to mention there's an illuminated star of course that goes for 500 dollars. it's available on a lot of the mercedes models so that's pretty cool seeing that at night but one of my favorite options for the front end at least is the adaptive front lighting system that goes for 650 dollars and that's really a safety feature in itself so if you're going around to bend at night the headlights are going to swivel based on the the direction of your steering angle better help illuminating what is around that bend so you're less likely to hit sasquatch or an alien or a deer or whatever the case so that's a pretty cool option right there if you guys were interested but anyways that pretty much rounds out the front end of the glc coupe here let's now go ahead and make our way to the side all right and zooming out since we are around to the side of this one when it comes to those window surrounds they will either be finished in a gloss black like you're looking at now or chrome depending upon the configuration that you go with there rear privacy glass does come standard taking a look at the side mirrors they will be body colored power adjustable side mirrors they are heated with led integrated turn signals they are also power folding that comes standard and you can get the mercedes-benz logo projector kind of lighting to the ground at night that goes for 275 dollars if you wanted that option it is optional but then take a look down at the wheel setup 19 inch five spoke alloys do come standard on this thing 20 inch multi-spoke amg alloys with the amg line packages of course and you will find plenty of 20 inch wheel designs to really make it your own if you really wanted to so anyways this side profile is everything i love the look of this but now it gets better. Let's go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, first thing I wanna point out, because literally every single manufacturer out there is putting a shark fin antenna up on the roof, but Mercedes-Benz does not. It is a very sleek, a very clean look up top. So 
little fun fact for you there. It's so different than I'm used to seeing, but anyways, there really isn't a rear spoiler on this thing. It's kind of like built into the back end, I guess you could call it, if you want to call it anything, so. But anyways, just below that, you do have that 4MATIC badging, of course, for the all-wheel drive system. You're going to find LED taillights. They do come standard, so better illumination at night there. Just below it all, though, you are going to find what looks like integrated exhaust outlets with dual chrome tips, but that is not the case. If you actually get up a little bit closer, you guys could probably see there's plastic within that chrome, so it's not actually exhaust there. The exhaust is located underneath, so I don't like how Mercedes-Benz did that, if I'm being honest. I wish they would have actually integrated that into the exhaust outlets there, but anyways, having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the GLC coupe, this is definitely one of my favorite parts. If you want to feel like James Bond, the coolest way to go ahead and open up that rear hatch is press in on the upper portion of the Mercedes logo, and that's how it's gonna open up. That is so stinking cool. If you don't own a Mercedes Benz, or Volkswagen does this a lot as well, you probably don't know that's how it works, but that's pretty darn cool. But it is a power lift gate, so that does come standard. There is a button on the key fob if you would prefer to do it that way, so either way is perfectly fine. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 19.2 cubic feet. If that is not enough space, you of course can fold those rear seats down. There's actually buttons in the back end to actually fold those rear seats down, so that was pretty convenient. And that bumps that up to 52.6 cubic feet for comparison's sake, because like I said, this thing is larger than the 2023 model year. Last year, that came in at 49 9.4 cubic feet so definitely a difference there but there are actually a couple grocery bag hooks back there there's cargo lighting back there there's a cargo cover back there there's chrome plated tie down anchors as well that was pretty cool seeing that there's some netted storage back on the driver's side corner in the back there and then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you will find a spare tire you guys know i love seeing that especially in luxury automakers because a lot of times they'll put the fix a flat which is actually a lot harder than a spare tire so Anyways, I love seeing that back there and there is some space around that spare tire You could probably put like an ice scraper or something like that if you wanted to but then make our way up to the rear legroom That comes in at 37.2 inches for reference. I mean even six feet tall So how much space I had back there heated rear seats in case you were interested go for $580 I wanted to get that out of the way But there is a rear center armrest not with cup holders, but with a phone holder back there <laughs> Wanted to emphasize that there is rear ventilation of course and there's a couple USB charging ports that does come standard as well but then make your way up to the front seats mb Tech's upholstery coming standard leather seating is available that goes for $1,620 heated front seats coming standard power adjustable front seats coming standard of course as well and all the power adjustments if you're not familiar with mercedes-benz it's all located on the door as opposed to the seat itself which is typically where you find it on every other manufacturer out there but ventilated front seats if you wanted those go for $450 overall as far as seat comfort goes it was definitely plenty adjustable the power long bar was insanely adjustable as well so in my short little test drive here today i had no issues whatsoever with the seat comfort but then taking a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping and it's going to be leather wrapped it's kind of a flat bottom as well which i thought was a pretty cool design but if you wanted the heated steering wheel that one goes for 250 dollars but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you got your mercedes logo that's going to be your lock button just underneath that unlock and the button to pop the rear tailgate there but it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply put my phone to the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of that infotainment screen there and so once started out 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster does come standard and of course in typical mercedes fashion there's so many different loadouts you can display up there there's an understated there's sport classic there's a full navigation setup if you want to display that up there and my personal favorite an off-road setup if you really wanted to take your glc coupe off-roading but plenty of different loadouts that all look absolutely amazing and of course it gives you everything that you need to see up there like outside temperature digital speedometer if you wanted to how many miles you have left until you hit empty so i always say this mercedes-benz might do the very best job when it comes to digital gauge clusters out there that i personally know of but anyways now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality a power sunroof is actually going to come standard and it's actually pretty big it's almost panoramic sunroof so it's that big but 
Dual zone climate control coming standard. You got 64 colors of ambient lighting and in typical Mercedes fashion, they do it better than everybody else in my opinion. It's so freakishly bright, it looks amazing. And they even outdid themselves with their Maybach cars because that's insanely bright lighting. But even this, this is absolutely amazing. But garage door openers throughout the three different garage doors found at the bottom portion, that frameless rear view mirror. So I love that as well. And I love all the different wood trims that Mercedes-Benz always tends to give you in all of their vehicles. So just above the passenger side glove box, you got a little bit of that surrounding the engine start button as well. But everything is finished in leather. It's finished with contrast stitching. Even the buttons for the power windows are finished in a nice silver and uh, texturized silver surrounding all those buttons as well. Just below that infotainment screen, you're gonna find a little hidden area to store your cell phone. There's a couple USB charging ports in there as well. You got a couple cup holders, but then the center armrest, um, it's an okay amount of storage. I don't have any issues with that and more USB charging ports in there as well but like i said mercedes benz does interior quality so good so ridiculously good so definitely don't have any issues there but now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display does come standard you get bluetooth and audio streaming android auto apple carplay factory navigation system does come standard as well you gotta love that you can check out your ambient lighting settings up there and adjust that if you wanted to but one of my favorite parts about this infotainment screen is the functionality to just simply say hey mercedes how can i help turn on the radio and there's a bunch of different commands you can't tell it to do absolutely everything but that's pretty cool that that's there as well but Anyway, speaking of the radio, when it comes to the sound system, an eight speaker Burmester sound system does come standard here. So having said that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Plenty of bass, plenty of clarity. It's Burmester. They have a very good reputation for high-end sound systems. Uh, another thing I like about turning up and down the radio is you can either slide your finger to the right to turn it up and slide it to the left to turn it down, or you can simply just press the button to turn it up and down slowly. So it's kind of cool that they got both options there as well. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen, of course, is when you do put the GLC in reverse, you will find a very, very high definition rear view camera with the panoramic view monitor there to the left as well letting you know who or what is behind you which is always is going to lead us into safety and so first let me start by saying it is an IIHS top safety pick for the non coupe version the coupe version hasn't been tested yet but I would assume it's probably the same thing but don't take my word for that because it hasn't been tested of course but front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver's knee airbag up front as well in the back you're gonna have latch aka lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard active Brake assist, Mercedes-Benz emergency call service, blind spot assist with exit warning, attention assist, cross wind assist, and Parktronic with active parking assist. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts of the GLC 300 Coupe, excellent styling. I don't think anyone can argue with that. I love it. It looks so different. In the world of SUVs here, at least in the US, an SUV with Coupe styling really stands out. So I'm a big fan of that for that reason. But brilliant interior quality, brilliant ambient lighting. You really can't beat the ambient lighting and interior quality of a Mercedes-Benz. Plenty of power as well. I certainly didn't have any issues bringing this thing up to speed. Honestly, I'm kind of having some trouble thinking of any constructive criticism for this thing because it is really done so freakishly well. I think it's just, there's so many options. <clears throat> you really can tack on thousands of dollars to the MSRP of this thing, but I guess that's a good thing because then you can really make it your own. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the GLC 300 Coupe in the comments section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel. Before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. If you're into new car reviews, that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.